In this video, we'll be looking at the CSEC Paper 1, January 2020, exam. Questions 1 to 60. Please subscribe for more video content. Let's look at question 1. It reads, what percentage of 40 is 8? So, to do that, we're going to write 8 as a percentage of 40. So, 8 expressed as a fraction of 40 is 8 over 40, and then we simplify. But we want to express it as a percentage, so we multiply by 100%. To convert a fraction to percentage, we have to multiply by 100%. Okay, now what do we do from here? That's correct. We're going to simplify a numerator with a denominator. And let's look at 8 and 40. 8 can actually enter itself, and 8 can actually enter 40. Into itself goes once, into 40 goes 5 times. Now what do we do from here? Well. We recognize that we only simplify using a common factor with a numerator and a denominator. So here we have 5 in the denominator and we have 100 in the numerator. So we can simplify. Can 5 enter 100? Definitely. So 5 goes into self once and 5 goes into 100 20 times. Then what do we do after this? Well, we cannot simplify a numerator with denominator anymore, and so we're going to multiply straight across. A 1 times 20 is 20, and 1 times 1 gives us 1. And since we have percentage sign, we put that back. And of course, 20 divided by 1 is still 20. And so our answer for that question is, you said it right, that's 20. And there's another approach we could actually use. We recognize that if we have 40, and we want to find 10% of it, we move the point one place backwards. And so 10% of 40, we move the point one place to the left. And so we know that 4 represents 10%. So we want to find out what 8 represents. So 4 represents 10%, and the other 4 represent another 10%. And so we recognize that 8 actually represents a total of 20%. So that's another approach we could also use to get the answer of 20. Now let's go on to question uh, 2. All right, so looking at question 2, we recognize that we have 2 divided by 3 to the power of negative 2. And we want to simplify this. Well, we're given the options. We're given 4 ninths, 4 sixths, 6 over 4, and 9 over 4. OK. Now we have to recall this law of indices, that if we have a to the power of negative m, this is what we do. We put 1 over a to the positive m power. Now I want you to recognize something here. Where this 1 came from? Well, think of the a as really a divided by 1 that we raise to the negative m power. And so what we actually do, because remember, a over 1 is really a, correct? Yeah, any number, any quantity divided by 1 is the same quantity. So it's still talking about a here. So what we do, we're going to flip this a over 1 and put what? 1 over a. And then we're going to change this negative m power to a positive m power. But we know that if we raise 1 to any power, we're still going to get 1. 1 to the 0 power is 1 because any power, any number to the 0 power is still that same, that same 1. 1 to the 2nd power is 1. 1 to the 3rd power is 1. Right? Let me just, if, if we put 1 to the 5th power, it's 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Right? So we're still going to get 1. So no matter what amount we put as the power, we're still going to get 1. So we know 1 to the m power divided by a to the m power is really 1 over a to the m power. Because 1 to the any power will give us 1. But a to m, we're not sure what that will be, because we do not know what a is. So going from this to this, this is what we did. We basically put 1 over the base of a and changed the negative m to a positive m in the denominator. OK, so we're going to do something similar with what we have here. 
So let's rewrite this. All right, so we have, again, 2 thirds raised to the negative uh, 2 power, what we said we did. All right, well, we actually should flip the 2 thirds and put 3 halves. And instead of having a, a negative power, we put what? A positive power. And we can distribute now the power onto each quantity in the numerator and denominator. So we're going to be 3 to the second power over 2 to the second power. Because recall that when I had um, a, we have, I think we have a 1 here, raised to the m power. We have 1 to the m over a to the m, right? So the same thing we're actually doing. The power is distributive over the quantities in the bracket, right? The numerator and denominator. So it's going to be distributed. This power here is distributed over these. So it would be 3 to the second power divided by 2 to the second power. Another way of doing this is realizing a square simply means that we're going to multiply the quantity by itself. So it's 3 over 2 times 3 over 2. But either way, it's, it's, we're going to get what? 3 threes, 9. 2 twos, 4. And similarly, we know 3 squared is 9 and 2 squared is 4. So our solution, therefore, is... If you said D, then you're correct. Let's look at the next question. And here we have question three. The square root of 17 squared minus 15 squared. Okay, so there are two ways we can actually work this out. By knowing the squares of the numbers in the teens. So let's say we know that what 17 squared is, right? 17 squared is really 17 times 17, and that should be 289 and we know that 15 squared is means 15 times 15 and that is 225 and so if we're looking at the 17 squared minus 15 squared it's really um, 289 minus 225 and we can simplify that now when we subtract these we should get 64 and square root of 64 is 8 so our answer is c now, obviously, um, you know, to subtract, we have 289. Let's look at that. Minus 225. 5 from 9 is 4. 2 from 8 is 6. 2 from 2 is 0. So our answer is just 64 here for this part. Okay, but somebody might say, well, you know, what if I don't know that the 17 squared will give me 289 and the 15 squared will give me 225? Well, we have other ways in which we can actually simplify this. All right? Let's look at this. Do you know that if you have a squared minus b squared, in other words, the difference of two squares, we can factorize this as the square root of a squared is actually a, and the square root of b squared is actually b. Okay, so once we have the difference, I mean we the result from subtraction, difference of two square quantities, we're going to take the square root of both of them. I'm going to say a square root of a squared, put it here as well. Square root of b is b, so put it here and here. And in one bracket, we put plus, another, we put minus. So we, we're saying we are actually going to get the product of two binomials. All right, so this binomial, which is a plus b, the sum of the roots, times the difference of the roots. And these are called conjugates. But that's not this is not really the lesson that we intend to look at really but just recognize that this is the same concept here 17 squared minus 15 squared we can simply do this we can simply do this all right we have 17 squared minus 15 squared here the 17 is really a so as we say in 17 squared or a squared and the 15 squared the 15 is really b all right so in bracket we're going to have 17 being a plus 15 being b multiplied by the 17, all right, and the 15 again. And watch how this is going to make it so easy for us. What is 17 plus 15? That's easy because we know 15 plus 15 is what? 30, all right? So if we took 2 off of the 17, we have 15. 15 plus 15, 30, plus the 2 we took off was 32. So that's going to be 32 multiplied by 17 minus 15. Of course, you know that's 2, all right? Very easy stuff. And what is 32 times 2? Two? 2 twos, 4, 2 threes, 6. Again, so we have 64. And the answer is going to be 8. Because we know that 8 times 8, which is 8 squared, 
is equal to 64. So that means square root of 64 is 8. So that's our solution there. You can play the video again. Just make sure you understand this concept of the difference two squares to see what we actually get here. All right, let's look at question number four. Now, question number four is saying, okay, the square root of 191 lies between which one of these options? All right, so, well, look, look at it. We know that 11 squared is what? 121. We know that 12 squared is 144. That should be um, easy if you're writing CXE. Three, and 13 squared is going to be what? 169. Memorize these, uh, my audience. If you have 14 squared, okay, I'm going to switch these um, these digits here, 6 and 9, and say so it's 196. 15 squared is what? 225. But we already passed the 191, right? So we know if we find the square root of 169 is 13, the square root of 196 is 14, square root of 225 is 15. We know that 191, that's what we're given here, 191, lies between what? These two. So 191 lies between these two quantities. All right? So if the square root of 169, right, is going to be 13, square root of 196 is going to be what? This is going to be 14. Therefore, the square root of 191 lies between 13 and 14. So our answer is, you said it right. It lies between 13 and 14. Answer is C. Because 191 lies between these two options. 161, 169, sorry, and 196. 191 is less than 196, but it's more than 169. And these are the two values, 13 and 14. So that was an easy one. Okay, so now let's look at question five and six. Okay, this is the concept of the distributive property. So recall for the distributive property that if we have A as a quantity multiplying the sum or difference of two other quantities, then we use the distributive property. We say that multiplication is distributive over addition or subtraction. And so we know that's A times B, all right? We're going to have plus or minus, which depends on which one you have. It's going to be A times C. We'll go over that again. If we are given A times the sum of two quantities or the difference of two quantities, we simply distribute the quantity outside onto each quantities inside by multiplication. So it's A times B plus or minus A times C. Okay, good. Now, so let's say we have this here. This, this distributed property helps us to work concepts out. For instance, I can let this A, all right, represent 91, 99, sorry. And this is 100 represents um, the, either the sum or difference of B and C. So we can split 101 up into B and C. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to separate this 100. But since I have 101, it makes sense to say 100 plus 1. Let's take 100 as the base number there, right? And then add a 1 to it. It's an easy, nice, rounded number here, 100. So it's really 99 times 100 plus 99 times 1 based on distributed property. So it's 99 times 100 plus the same 99 outside distributed onto the one as well by multiplication, 99 um, times times 1. Of course, it makes it easy for us to work out because it's actually 9,900. And 99 times 1 is what? 99. So you know, the total answer is 9,999. But that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for, we're looking for this option here. Is this part of the answer? Sometimes what CXC does, they, they switch these two values or these two values, but it doesn't matter. Because the order in which you multiply doesn't matter, as long as you have the plus sign in between here, or minus, depending on what we were working with. So if you look at the options, what is what is the answer? Ninety nine times one hundred plus ninety nine times one, straightforward. 